Hey everybody, it's Nick Inman, founder of VolumeProfileTrader.com on Tuesday, October 16th. And the markets have had a two-day bounce here, a nice bounce actually. And what we've seen is an accumulation of stocks over the past couple of days. And, uh, you know, earnings have come out and they haven't been bad at all. They've, you know, we've had a few be beats, a few misses. But overall, I, I think that the earnings result, the earnings picture is showing you right here, right now, things aren't as bad as they look uh, from, you know, a fundamental standpoint. And it looks like, from a technical standpoint, that this value area high for the year has held. Uh, call it the 50-day moving average as well. It is holding. So uh, that is a positive for the market for the S&P. And I think the main thing that I take away from it is today when we gapped above, now now this is, you may get a little confused here, okay? Um, last month's point of control at 1433, that is why I sold short SPY yesterday. It was a hedge against uh, the last month's point of control. Well, guess what? I was uh, clearly oblivious to what the market was showing me, which was just very light selling against that big resistance level. What happens? Well, towards the end of the day, the market rallies, and today we gap open above this 1433 level, and we hold it. So if you saw my Twitter feed this morning, I said, I've gone from a negative standpoint to a positive standpoint. I think the market is on a buy right now. And I think that's important. I think you can start to look at stocks and look for appreciation to the upside. Now, we are at a level where there could be a little bit of resistance, but if you're looking at the same, uh, you know, if you're looking at volume, what is dominating uh, the volume side right now? Buyers or sellers? And it's clearly buyers. Every, you know, here's your, over the last 55 hours of trading, uh, what, we have had six or seven big buying bars in the last couple of days, and we've had, we, we've had four selling bars, call it since, since the lows or so. We've had four selling bars, and they've all been almost half the average volume. So just keep that in mind and realize that the market looks like it could have a little more upside. We could be challenging these year-to-date highs and looking for higher prices. So... Yes, I, I, I switched my standpoint, but, I, you know, it was all based off of last month's point of control. Are we below it or are we above it? And right now in the S&P, we're above it, and we're seeing some positive inflows in the market. People are willing to buy. People are willing to put money to work. Now, the only thing I bought yesterday to take advantage of that strength was Intel. And the whole thesis on Intel, and I'm going to zoom out one year, is against the two-year point of control, we got our buying bar with good volume, and we bought the 21 calls. Now, earnings came out uh, this afternoon or so, and price is trading basically right around where it closed yesterday. Well, guess what? Nearly got out of the Intel calls at the high of the day. Bought the 21 calls for $1.17 each, November calls, sold them for $1.17. 57 each. I believe it was 57. If it traded 67, it was 67. But I want to say it was $1.57 each. I know that was pretty close to the high because right after that, um, Intel pretty much started, you know, scaling back down, trading under 22.40. I got, I unloaded it up or over 22.40. So good to see that. And after hours, you know, obviously Intel took a little bit of a hit. But this was a trade based off the two-year point of control you're looking for a bounce and that's what we got 34 percent gains off of this and this is what you can look for off volume profile similar similarly uh, caterpillar two-year point of control what do we have a very nice bounce off of the two-year point of control we are long 8345 uh, so we caught it near the beginning of the day near these lows and we're seeing price appreciation now um, 
really we could see a nice run up in this and I have a limit to actually sell half of my order uh, at this retracement here and I'm going to show you actually let me show you I probably have it on no I don't well yeah right here um, uh, the we're at the what 23 point six percent retracement the point of control for the current month which I don't put too much emphasis in the uh, average true range which we just pierced above that can provide for a good support or resistance level and we're creeping up on the 20 day moving average but I'm really looking at this 38.2 percent retracement and it's also the 50 day moving average it's the bottom let me zoom out a bit last month you can see the bottom of this high volume area are all around those same levels so I'm looking to unload some of this at that price level however at the same time the point of control for this year is at 80 you know above 87 so I would basically be giving up a, a dollar of potential upside I'm not sure I want to do that so what am I going to do well I'm looking at what Caterpillar is doing right now and I see the lows. Every time prices come down to this 82 level or so, it's been right to be a buyer. Well, then I ask myself, where has it been right to be a seller? And other than this little blip uh, where we continued lower, it's been right to be a seller every time north of $88. And you can see over here, I won't put too much emphasis over here, but starting, call it, at these lows right here uh, from looks like the 2nd of August what it do it traded north of 90 again in September what it do now it traded north of 94 here we are again again off the two-year point of control earnings are coming out so I'd probably be willing to unload some of this into earnings especially if it gets up towards 88 but I'm not going to be afraid to hold this for a couple of days and giving it a little room to run so right now uh, the position is up about two percent which is good news and I just want to see a little more follow-through uh, also you can see on a 90-day chart uh, the point of control for the 90 days is down at this 82 half level well guess where we bounce you got it uh, basically the 82 half level so uh, that's something that you want to keep in mind also alright going back to the old the old winner here Apple uh, giving us a nice bounce off of these lows. Now, I have to be honest, I, I stayed with a very small position, I stayed involved in Apple. So what what was the case here? Well, let's see. I remember getting long Apple again. Here, I'm gonna use a, a different tool here. Alright, get I got long Apple off the 50 day moving average, had a nice bounce, um, ended up taking most of my profits on this down day here when it started to roll over. I don't remember if I unloaded up at these highs. Uh, you'll be able to see that when the trading results for the month of October come out. However, it pierced. And then again, uh, tried to pick up Apple on this down day here around 637. It actually had a pretty nice up move towards, um, you know, north of 640. Ended up getting clipped at break even. Again, uh, on this big down day, bought Apple sub 620, I'm sorry, 630, around 628, I believe, had a nice push. I was expecting six uh, mid-650s for a target and didn't get it. Guess what? Got stopped out on almost my entire position. I kept a placeholder position just to keep stay involved. That ended up being the right thing to do, and I ended up buying more Apple today around uh, 6 well, my cost basis is 634. So, let's see if I can uh, do this. 634 in Apple is roughly my cost basis. So basically, I'm looking for, you know, obviously more upside in Apple, or I wouldn't be long. So where's my target? Well, figuring that we based off of this point of control for the current month, and you can also look at last, let's see, two months ago, the value area low provided great support for Apple. Now where are we looking for? Well, I think there are a lot of important levels around 658 or so in Apple. Uh, in August, we had the bottom of the high volume area. We had the lows in September here. We, let me get rid of this line again. We had the value area low for 
uh, September at the 658, 659 level. And again, for the current month, the value area high is around 659. So all around the same level. Guess what? That's kind of where I'm looking for Apple to go. Another $10, and I'll probably scale down on two-thirds of my position. So right now I have a full-size position, and I'm looking to scale down on about two-thirds of it in the high 650s. Uh, right here, right now, we have to worry because we have the 20-day and the 50-day right above us. But I'd like to think that Apple's going to make a push above those levels and uh, try to push towards 660. And if that's the case, that's where I'm looking to unload some of this stock. I am going long into earnings. It's just not going to be a big position. So I just want to point that out. Bristol-Myers. This thing continues to work. I'm short 34 puts, bought 32s. Um, yes, I bought 32s, you know, to protect myself, to also lower that cost, that cash that I need to hold in my account. So instead of holding 3,400 per put I sold, now I only have to hold 200 per put spread I sold. So say you sell um, 10 spreads for... Uh, I collected 79 cents in premium, I think. That's what it's looking like, uh, kind of doing the math, math off the top of my head. But 79 cents in premium. So if you did a spread, 34 by 32, you have to hold $200 in margin on a basically 79 cents of credit. So essentially your return on investment is almost 50%. And you know, you're, you're only holding, you know, for 10 lots, $2,000 in your account. So not that big of a deal, and it gives you a great return on investment. Now those, that spread, well, uh, I'm up 30 cents per spread, so almost half of the value. Uh, just going to let this ride, probably going to take it off into earnings, just because I don't want that risk, but I still have eight more days. Earnings are on the 28th, so I'm not going to, you know, rush this. Uh, but let's let me show you what the what the thesis was getting into this trade. Last month's point of control, the 90-day point of control, and then started with big buying coming in. Uh, actually, I think I got in on Wednesday off of these levels. So then, you know, there was a little more selling. Uh, you know, it looks like you had a flush out right at the lows, and then a reversal. Then huge buying started to come in. That's what you want to see. So. All right, ConocoPhillips. This actually surprised me a little bit. A nice bounce off the 200-day moving average, and we just want to see a continuation uh, off of these levels. It is also, which is probably a little more important, uh, this trend line support, uh, you know, just continues to hold. So let's see. Earnings are on the 23rd here, and obviously with earnings seasons, you just have to be careful with what's going on and kind of go from there. Um, let me get back down to a one-year chart. Uh, the S&P, you know, it's looking good. Uh, I still have a position in Altria, a small position. And the reason why is because I do like to stay involved on, on positions. And uh, in this circumstance, Altria is giving us a little bounce. This is a position, short credit spreads, put spreads. I'll probably just look to... Um, roll them out to a further dated month. And really, gold, you know, giving us a little bounce off the value very high. Silver, um, same thing, this is a little bit weaker. Crude, bouncing, holding uh, the value area low for the year. The euro, let me get rid of this. All right, the euro, 200-day moving average, looks like pretty good support, right? I've been personally just wanting to stay away from this. The Euro 200-day is support. Well, guess what? Now we're at the point of control for the year again. We originally faded this move right into the point of control for the year. Faded it. I don't remember the percentage. I know the percentage gain on the puts were, was about like 20, 25%. Um, but here we are again. So what you can say is you have an uptrend and you have sideways consolidation. In sideways consolidation, during an uptrend, Generally speaking, you do want to buy the dip. Well, I wasn't confident enough in the euro to, do, to buy the dip. So I just stayed on the sidelines, didn't really give a recommendation. Um, but I did say on the dollar that 
this looks like you know the top end of the range and it's all based on this high volume area here the top end of this range the bottom end uh, the dollar looks like it's rolling over here sure we're at the point of control for the year but it just doesn't look like it has much strength so overall maybe the feds qe is doing a lot more work i got the buy the re you know quote unquote re buy signal whatever you want to call it uh, today when uh, the s p gapped above uh, September's point of control. My thesis was if it holds yesterday's close, which it, it did, then I'm looking for higher prices in the market. Sure enough, we got the follow through. You know, I'm really happy that I'm long Apple. I'm really happy that I took profits on Intel off of the bounce. I'm really glad that I bought Caterpillar. Uh, this is just, you know, what you're looking for. Be patient. Wait for your setups. And you're going to realize time and time again that this volume profile thing is going to give you excellent, one, you're going to have excellent timing in the market, and two, you're going to have some of the best support resistance levels that you can imagine. So, anyways, I hope this helps. One thing I, wanted, I want to mention, and I really haven't said anything, but the website's almost done. It's, it's going to be a great resource for you if you choose to join. Um, you know, it's going to go a lot more in detail, learning about how I trade, how I use volume profile combined with a lot of other things. I will give you more information on that when the time is right, but I do just want to give you an idea. If this is something you're interested in, then you know, stay tuned and realize that in the next week or so, you'll have an opportunity to become a member and really learn from me in a much more detailed fashion. So anyways, I hope this serves you. I hope you have a wonderful night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.